Today with the gold wing, we're going to start looking at things like the back brakes, getting the oil changed. I've got my light set up. It's kind of unfortunate because it's really nice out today, but with the garage door open, the lighting in here really sucks. So let me stop autofocus here. If I come over from the opposite side, I can pop this side cover off. And right here we have a rear brake fluid reservoir. The master cylinder is down here. We have a line that comes off the master cylinder, comes off around the wheel well and back over to this side where the rear brakes are. So you can see the brake pedal is still really stiff on this. So I just gave it a couple shots of uh, WD-40 in attempt to help free it up. But it's still really sticky to the point where the spring that's here won't even return it. So my plan is going to be we're going to take the master cylinder off the bike. So we're going to unbolt this here, take it down. We'll take the brake line off and we'll unbolt the master cylinder and see if we can get that off the bike. Because I want to potentially take that apart and double check to make sure all the seals are good. Make sure it's not the piston in that that's causing this to be really sticky. And once we get that rebuilt, if things are all well and good, then we should be good for back brakes. And if not, then we'll turn our attention down to the left side of the bike where the actual brake calipers and stuff are on the rear uh, wheel. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this uh, master cylinder off. is extra cramped today because it's really raining out really hard and I uh, don't want to put my bikes outside and get it rained on especially my uh, ATC 70 and my uh, XL those things will never see wet uh, anyways uh, so this is what we have left to do with the bike like I said first what we're going to do is we've got a rebuild kit for that rear master cylinder now this is a Honda part number 43520-MB9-781 I had to order it after my local Honda dealership. Uh, also got a filter for next time, oil filter for next time. I already did it once. It's just an extra filter to hang on to for next time. Uh, we've got a set of valve stem oil seals for this bike. So I ordered these on eBay. I got these from BC. Uh, they're not Honda OEM, but Honda OEM, they wanted like 15 bucks each. I got this whole set for 45. We'll see how it goes. Probably going to be better than what's on there. I'd say what's on there is probably uh, rock hard. And then finally, we got these brand new Dunlop D404 uh, motorcycle tires. Uh, the rear on this bike actually calls for a 140 width tire, but when I looked at how much space there was between the rear tire that's on it now, which is a 130, uh, and the uh, axle housing that goes, that goes our drive shaft housing, there's like two millimeters there, so I didn't want to stretch it, so I went with the 130, like what's on it now. So, that being said, here's our Rear master cylinder rebuild kit. Let's get that rear master off the bike and rebuild it. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and loosen up these bolts here. So there's a bolt here. I think you can just barely see this one. Two bolts here that I believe are holding the master cylinder on. And I also need to let go this brake line. So the brake line I can use these wrenches to go over the line, you get that over, and then you can go ahead and get that cracked loose. Uh, I'm also gonna give things a quick blast of air to make sure no dirt and stuff gets into my brake lines or anything like that. So, uh, let's see. First thing I'll do is I'll get all those bolts loosened up. Should be a 10 mil, yeah, it is. Definitely gonna want to clean that hardware up for sure. It's in quite a state. 
water washed the shit out of it. So it's that. I think the next thing I'll do actually is loosen up this brake line because I'm going to want this to be, I guess, half rigid when I try to loosen that up. If I let these off and I start trying to wrench on this, that master cylinder is just going to be twisting around. So a good quick blast of air. That should be clean enough. So I'm going to try to get your guys' eyes on this. You can see that circlip that's in right here. That's uh, relatively rusted in. So I'm going to go away and dig on that for a bit. I get that out, then I can take the rest of this apart. I'm definitely going to wire wheel all this shitty old fucking black paint off of this. This is disgusting, and it's just making a fucking mess everywhere. So yeah, I'll get the plunger and stuff out, get all the internals out. I'll wire wheel this clean. We'll hit it all with some brake clean. Then we'll start putting the new rebuild kit back into it. I'll bring you guys back shortly. So I managed to get the plunger out by getting the circlip out and to get the circlip out I had to actually cut down into the side of the housing so I could punch the circlip out from inside this way. It was just completely rusted onto the, uh, the cap here and there was no way it was coming out. Uh, this will not affect or impact any performance whatsoever as everything is sealed behind this plunger here anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the stuff out, get this cleaned up and we'll start rebuilding this. So I managed to get this all apart. Got the uh, new piston and seals and everything in now. So this should be a good non-leaking rear master cylinder. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this back on the bike now. We're gonna get everything hooked back up, see if we can prime those brakes and then see if this will actually hold brake uh, power. It feels a lot better, I'll tell you that much now. So, uh, let's see how it goes. So I'm not sure how much that was useful at all, but anyways, I've got the rear master cylinder, the reservoir, everything, brake uh, lever all hooked back up again. I'm gonna bring you guys around to the other side of the bike. We're gonna start dumping brake fluid in here. We'll pump the pedal up a bunch, then we'll leave the pedal depressed. I'll come over here and loosen off the bleed screw. We'll let that shoot a bunch of stuff into a bottle and we'll keep doing that until we have no air in the system. Hopefully then we'll have brakes. Let's give it a go. So now that I've got the bleed on those brakes done, I'm just gonna go ahead and top up my reservoir, put my cap back on, build up some pressure and see if the pressure stays. So the first thing I did was I took off this rear master and I tried to get this rear brake working and I found that when I would pump up the brake after taking it apart and getting it all cleaned up, it would maintain pressure. Uh, so I bought a rebuild kit for the master cylinder, I did that. Was doing the whole trying to build up pressure thing after bleeding, still having an issue, turns out 
uh, there's lick brakes on this bike, so there's a uh, proportioning valve in under here, and this actually pumps fluid to the caliper on the rear left, as well as the caliper up here in front right. So once I figured that out, bled both sides, great brake pressure, all well and good. One of the other things I really want to do is I want to actually get the oil changed in this, see what condition the oil is in, it, is in and then put some new oil in it. So I'm going to go ahead, i got the door left open here, as you can see. I'm just going to go ahead and back this out by the door for a minute, start it up, let it run for three or four minutes, let the oil heat up nice and warm, and then I'll bring it back in. We'll go ahead and we'll pop that oil plug and we'll drain the oil. For those of you curious as to what oil I'm going to be using in this bike, it's your running mill 10W40 four stroke oil for motorcycles. Stuff I get at the Canadian Tire, it's their heaviest brand. If I bring you in close for a second, we can see that this meets all of the various specs, API, SL, SJ, SH, SG, and J, so MA specifications. It's written right there in the back. And I use this in all my four stroke bikes. It works best for me. So while that's doing its thing draining off, I'll go ahead and I'll pop the oil cover for the oil uh, filter cover off as well. Now we'll get that drained out as well. So while the final drips of oil drain into the bike. I want to do a couple things. First thing I'm going to do is pop this oil filter out of the housing. For some reason it doesn't seem like it wants to come out. If that's the case we'll take the middle section out first. So there's that. See right here there's an o-ring. So when you buy the Replacement for this, it comes with this O-ring, so we'll replace this O-ring. I'm going to lay this down here in the cardboard for a second. Pop our filter out. This looks like it's gotten some good, good use. And there's supposed to be a washer between the filter and the spring. And unfortunately, it doesn't appear that we get one of those with our $500 Volvo. So... All we can do is either track one down or make one. So the combination of the lathe and uh, a bit of the, uh, the bench grinder, I went ahead and I bored that out. I used the lathe for that. So now this pipe fits down through, no problem. And so that way we can have the spring on the other end of that. And then this sits up in against this rubber section right here on the filter. So this was missing, just made a new one. So now we can go ahead and move forward with getting this uh, new filter and stuff in. I think first what I want to do is I'm going to take five minutes or so and clean up that filter housing because it's in quite a state. So I'll bring you guys up on the bench for a bit of fast forward and we'll get that cleaned up.
I'm going to take this out by the door and give it a good solid blasting out. Now I got most of that crud free. And I'll bring you guys back when we're ready to put some O-rings back in this and start putting oil back in the bike. So this is looking about a million times better than it was. Nice and clean inside and out. You can pull this O-ring, put the new one in, and we'll start putting some oil back in the bike once we get the new filter installed. So my buddy John dropped by again today and uh, we were shooting the shit for a bit and just kind of picking away. I didn't really shoot any video while he was here. But anyways, we got the filter and the plug back in. The bike is filled back up with oil now. I've run it all as well. Another thing we did was we went ahead and we just popped out to Canadian Tar and I grabbed some SAE 80 gear oil. I changed out the gear oil in the back hub there. So I got that done as well. And one of the weird things that happens when I was putting the gear oil filler plug back on. This happened. So this is the flange on the gear oil plug. And you can see it's where the rubber usually sits. And it actually just cracked. Like I barely even tightened it. John was there watching me, I literally put nothing on it and it just separated. So what I did in the interim was I wrapped Teflon tape around the threads of the gear oil plug. I just screwed it back in snug, so that should be good for now. But John's going to grab me a piece of 2 inch aluminum and I'll machine a new one of these on the lathe. So I'll bring you guys along for the ride when we do that later in the week. This is the situation we have currently. So this is the drain plug, or the fill plug, sorry for the, uh, the rear gear oil. And when I changed the gear oil the other day, I was tightening this on and I barely even had it snug and this happened. So this outside flange actually came off. So if I bring you in close, and this focuses ever, you can see right there where it was cast and it's ca the casting cracked. So this is what we're going to do right now. I'm going to Measure this up in all dimensions and diameters so we know exactly what we need to do. Draw it out here from like a side on perspective so we can see exactly what we're going to do. And then I'm going to take this piece of aluminum that I managed to get my hands on. And there should be more than enough there to make a fuck three of these if I wanted to. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and try our hand at making a new gear oil fill plug for this bike. I figured it would be a good exercise for me to play around on the uh, on the lathe. So I'm going to measure this up, draw something up, make a plan of attack, and we'll make our way over to the lathe. So those are my rough measurements. So essentially this is a 30 millimeter plug. Um, we've got a bit of an undercut here as that's where this O-ring sits. Right in here sort of thing. That gets held flush against the rear hub to keep the gear oil in. And this is a 17 mil uh, hex. Now the thing is, I'll, I'll turn this down to 17 mil. But then I'm going to file it manually on two sides just so I can have a spot where I can get a wrench on. I don't have a milling machine so I can't do the proper 60 degree turn mill, 60 degree turn mill to make this. But that's fine. That doesn't need to be. As long as I got two flat surfaces to put a wrench on, this will be good. Now that we've got a nice finished face on this side, I'm going to go ahead and make the adjustment here so we can start taking this 
down to the 40 mil diameter. So right now this is two inches, which will be 50 millimeter ish. And we're taking it down to 40. So I'm going to keep doing this for a bit. When I get it down to 40 millimeters, I'll bring you back and we'll talk about what we're going to do in the next step. So we've taken the part down to the maximum OD, which is this flange. See, that's 39.95, 39.96 millimeters. So now the next thing we need to do, now that we've got this whole piece down to 40 mil, is we know, looking at our diagram here, That's this diameter here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take down seven millimeters worth of it, maybe a little more, just to give myself some working room, down to 29.75 or 30 millimeter. So I need to take another 10 mil off of this in so far, and that gives us the point where we're going to be threading into and also getting that undercut done so that we can fit our O-ring in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take probably 10 millimeters of this or a centimeter of it down to that 30 right here and then we'll be ready to start threading that small piece okay so we're at the point now where we've got flange section out here that's our 40 mil the thread section here is 30 mil and this is inner ridge right here where the threads stop and that's the same size as this now so now we're ready to thread that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the single point threading tool loaded up We'll try to get a few passes in here, see how far in we can get with those threads. Hopefully we can get in most of the way. And then once we get that threaded, um, we should be good to look at boring this part out. Or I might even leave it solid. I don't think it's real necessary to have this hole in this side of it, but we'll see. And then uh, we should be good to Take it down on the other side, down to 17 mil with a parting tool. Then we can lop that off and then put a uh, two flats on it so we can get a wrench on it. So let's see if we can get some thread on this uh, 30 mil section right here. And just quickly to check this thread, pretty sure this is a 16 TPI. I go ahead and take my thread gauge, I can stick it down and they fit perfectly. They line up perfectly. So I know that's 16 threads per inch. So I'm going to set my machine up for 16 threads per inch, get it in threading mode, and we'll uh, come in with the threading tool. Now we're getting lots of this on this video, but uh, my buddy John popped by. We were having a chat for a bit, him and his young fella were here. I just finished doing the single point threading on this, so now we can see that the threads on this match the threads on this perfectly. It sits in there fantastic, so now the thread is good. I just finished doing a bit of a undercut in here for our... O-ring, so if I locate the O-ring, we'll see now that this will come in over these threads and just sit slightly recessed under that. It's about halfway in. I don't have any tools to get in any deeper. I was thinking about adjusting one of my parting tools, but I really don't want to. And I don't have any high-speed seal to cut a new one. So I'm content with that. As long as it's seated under there, it'll hold that in against the... Uh, the side of the uh, the hub then it'll be good so at this point we are ready to do a couple of things one we'll go ahead and do the thickness on this so that's going to bring us out to about here ish so I can make a little mark here that's going to be the outside of that so I can come out with the parting tool probably between these two lines here and bring this down so that we have enough inside then that we can make a spot to put a wrench 
And then on the outside here, from here back, this is where we'll part all the way through. And I'm probably gonna have to use a hacksaw once I get in so far, because I don't have a parting tool deep enough to do that. So I'm gonna start bringing this in for parting, and we'll see if we can get in far enough so we can make a, a decent wrench hold for that plug. So essentially there's the new plug. You see we've got our threaded end, the flange, slight undercut. I'd say there's probably a half millimeter of undercut there, so it should be enough to hold our gasket or grommet in place. And then in there you can see I've got it almost all the way cut through so I can finish off with a hacksaw. And this piece here is actually where we're gonna put two flats so we can get a wrench on that and turn it in and out of the, uh, the hub. So there's the old one that's broken. See there's the flange comes off it. There's the rubber went in, it was hollow there. So we didn't bother doing that the one we just made. We have a look at the new one here. So this rubber goes here. There's a flange here and this flange is only about half as deep as the one on the existing one, but that's okay because that'll squat down a bit and it'll be good anyways to keep the juices in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this back in the vise quickly. We're gonna flatten off a couple spots here so we can get a 21 millimeter wrench on it or an EV a little further and do a 20 mil, and then we should, should be good to test this out and see if it fits in the bike. So there's our new plug fitted into the hub. All as well, the rubber ground is nice and snug. The plug is nice and snug in the hole. The threads actually got a bit tighter as it went out, so I must have, must have been a little bit of a tape around them, so I'm going to dress it down with a file. That's good to go. Now we've got our new plug done. So now let's move on. I'm at the point now where I've got everything off on the left, the right side of the bike here. So this is cylinders one and three. Uh, now the trick is here is that you can put cotton rope down inside the cylinder through the spark plug hole and then turn that piston up to top dead center. And what'll happen is then the rope that you feed in there. So I just got this cotton rope here. The rope that you feed in there will keep it so that after you pop the collets or the, the keepers out of the, uh, the valve springs, your valves will stay in place and it won't drop down into the cylinder. So I'm going to go ahead and make up a little thing so I can press those springs. I'm going to get some rope down in those cylinders and then I'm going to go ahead and get these valve seals changed on the uh, one and three side. So I just quickly want to show you guys what I did now to uh, be able to compress those springs. So what I've got done is I've got a simple piece of threaded bar. I, I went ahead and screwed back in the uh, rocker keepers or the rocker bolts rocker assembly bolts. I just use voice grips to clamp this piece of threaded bar on each of those so that's nice and solid. So now I can come in under here like so, get this on top of the uh, valve springs, rotate that in, you'll see that compresses down. And now I can get at those keepers with my magnet. So I'm going to go ahead, get those keepers off that spring. We'll have a look at the valve seal this there. We'll put the new one on and then I'll do the same for seven more valves and uh, we'll get this put back together. So there's the valve sim oil seal. I was just giving it a quick clean off. There's a lot of junk and crud on it. So I'm going to grab my envelope full of new ones. It's right here. I'm going to pop this one off. So here's my new ones. I'll pop this one out. See, what kind of, I can see it looks like it's pretty loose already. So yeah, that was pretty loose. Let me to focus because I got out of focus. Off. Let me turn this back on for a brief moment. So that one was pretty loose. There's that. As good as the views, we're gonna get on that anyways. If I compare that to a new one here, so let me grab one of my new ones quickly. can see how that hole in the new one is a lot smaller than this old one. So this old one here is just 
Waller. Dude. This is probably original. And I mean, this is one's nice and rubbery. This one feels like it's hard plastic. So I'm going to pop the new one on. And then I'm going to move on and do the rest. Same as what we're doing now. So I just want to do a quick check back in with you guys. Now that I got the uh, fuel pump and the uh, tack uh, gear back installed. I've got the cam and the, uh, the rocker assembly all back in. And I'm getting ready to put the heat shield on for the front uh, ton belt cover. And the thing is, there was a gasket. <clears throat> on this here and it's completely completely boned it's like brittle so I went ahead and cleaned this up with some brake cleaner I did the same for the surface over there on the bike and essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some black silicone RTV high heat RTV and just paint around this a nice light coat and we'll stick that on this is not going to be running for a couple days yet at most once I get everything back together I'll turn the motor over by hand a couple times but uh, just little things you can do if, if you're short, like I'm sure if I had to go and order that gasket now, I'd be a week waiting for it. Uh, in a week's time, I plan on being, you know, 500 miles from here. So I'm going to go ahead, use black RTV, we'll put it on that, and we'll stick this back on the bike. Then I'll get the cover on, get the cam gear back on, and then I'm ready to go attack the left side of the bike. At this point, I've got the right side of the bike done and everything is back together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do this side and I'm going to actually try to present this one in a bit more detail now that I'm familiar with the process. And I'm probably also going to do a, a, a video specific to how I'm actually doing compression on these springs when I get these off. Just to uh, show how I'm doing that as well because it's a pretty neat little trick that helps uh, make this go a lot easier.